In today's video, we are going to look at how you can easily tamp your coffee perfectly for a shot of espresso. But before we get to that point, what is tamping? Why do we need to tamp and when should we tamp? I am going to give you basically those few reasons as to why we need tamping and why tamping is necessary. With my paper here, my guidance paper, I am going to be telling you some of the reasons as to why you should tamp, how to tamp your coffee and what are the effects of tamping your coffee. Uh, what are the effects of uh, tamping your coffee negatively or in a bad way? So let's get to the point. Uh, just in case you're new to this uh, channel, I really thank you a lot for watching this video. But uh, please make it a point to subscribe. There is a subscription uh, word below your video. A word below your video whereby you can easily tap and turn on the notification bell for more and more interesting videos about coffee. So what is tamping? And uh, why do we need to tamp? Basically, me as a barrister, the term tamping, I relate it to the pressure. Oh, this is the act of pressing your coffee grounds uh, to create a bed within the potter filter to extract air or to have a perfect extraction or an even extraction. What do we mean by that? Every time we get to Every time we get to extract our shot of espresso, we use this espresso machine like you see it here. This is the espresso machine which we use and every time it's trying to extract or it's trying to push out or try to make an espresso, it uses force or what we call pressure. Most of you know uh, the, most of us know the V60 and the other craft brews like uh, this one that you see it here. As the machine uses pressure, this one uses uh, gravity force to do what? To brew a cup of coffee. So as we continue, why do we need to camp to tamp our coffee? Every time we get to doze off our coffee into this potter filter, like you see it here, our coffee is not compacted or it doesn't have a perfect straight bed through which is going to help us extract a shot of espresso out of it. But uh, out of it, and uh, basically, every time we need to tamp or every time we tamp that coffee ground, we're trying to compact it together so that we don't allow any space between the coffee grounds uh, within the coffee grounds or is access to water through the different channels to have a very poor shot of espresso. Then the other point is to prevent channeling. Like you see this potter filter here, every time we try to tamp negatively our coffee, it ha it's a double potter filter. Once you see this side and this side, every time you're trying to extract a shot of espresso, espresso is supposed to flow out at once, evenly at once, so that we don't have uh, difficulties in having a flow of espresso but you are going to find that while the coffee is channeling uh, while the, uh, the espresso is trying to, uh, to flow out of the potter filter it comes out from one side and every time you get to experience that that basically means channeling it comes from a poor tamping then the other point to prevent under extraction. What do we mean by under extraction? Every time you tamp badly or every time you try to Tamp your coffee with a, a light, a very light tamping or a light effort, it's going to run very fast. It is going to run very fast. So, to prevent that under extraction, we have to tamp our coffee in a very perfect way so that we are, so that we get to denounce the what? The under extraction. Then, still, we come to another point which is over extraction. Some of us tend to tamp our coffee with too much weight. Every time you tamp your coffee with too much weight, it's going to cause over extraction. Whereby, remember, an espresso is supposed to be between 20 to 30 seconds, but you're going to find that the longer the espresso takes, the more effective, negative effectives, uh, negatively effective it is. And you're going to find much more complaints about your shot of espresso. Then the other thing, uh, we tamp basically to determine the density of the, uh, of the coffee that we are trying to serve our clients. Like you see, I have two coffee beans. I have this grinder and I have this grinder. But you're going to find the fact that uh, these coffee beans in this hopper and these coffee beans in this hopper are totally different. Reason being that uh, the density, the weight of these coffee beans that you see here is, is not the same. You're going to find that small beans are more heavier than the big beans. Uh, just a second. All right. So, uh, more be, uh, the, these beans are lighter than these or these are heavier than these. So, we try to turn basically to understand the to understand the 
density of the beans. Then the other thing is to create resistance while the espresso is flowing. Every time we tamp, with, uh, every time we get to tamp our coffee, remember this machine, the espresso machine that we're seeing here, it uses too much force or too much energy or pressure, a lot of pressure to push out the espresso or to extract a brew out of the coffee grounds. But if you don't tamp your coffee, it's going to just pass out like in a watery form. That's why you test your coffee and it's like watery, salty or sour, many defects like most of the baristas know. Then uh, once you tamp it uh, with too much energy, still it's going to use too much force, but still your espresso is going to test negatively. And once you tamp it perfectly, the pressure that is going to use, uh, that the pressure that is going to be used by this machine will be just even because you've tamped your coffee perfectly when it was in the potter filter. So what's next? How do we tamp our coffee? Without wasting any minute, let's get to the point of tamping our coffee. How do we get to tamp our coffee? These are the tools that we need while tamping our coffee. We need a tamper. This is the tool we use for tamping. Some of them are flat, some of them are cylindrical, but with me I have a cylindrical one. And some of the baristas have a, an automatic tamper, but for today I'm not going to use an automatic an automatic tamper, I'll just do what? I'll just switch off. We are going to use this since most of the baristas have the manual tamper. And we need this. This is the potter filter where we doze off our coffee, then we get to tamp. We need our grinder that is going to help us grind our coffee, hence dosing it into the potter filter. And we need the weighing scale. This weighing scale also helps us determine the density and the weight of the coffee grounds that are in the potter filter. So, what are the steps that we take? First, I am going to get my grinder here, weigh the potter filter before I put any shot of espresso. I think I'll bring it close here. So as I weigh my potter filter here, I'll tell the grams of or the weight of the potter filter, then grind our coffee. So every time I grind, it's dozing into the what? Into the potter filter. So right now we are dozing off our coffee. So we are going to see the weight of the coffee grounds. Like you see, it's 18. So how are we going to tamp this 18 grams of coffee? I have this tamper. How am I going to hold this tamper? Like you see, I put it in my right arm. Then I make sure that these two fingers, the thumb and the first finger, hold the rim of the, pot of, uh, of the what? Of the tamper. Then these three fingers, that you see here, hold the tamper tightly so that I don't get loose of it. And how do we position ourselves? Positioning yourself really helps you a lot whereby most of the baristas are facing a challenge of not knowing how to position yourself while tamping. Look straight to the potter filter that you are going to tamp or look straight to the potter filter while holding it. I'll place it in my left arm, then get hold of my tamper right here. Hold it and make sure that I create a 90 degrees angle like you see here. I create a 90 degrees. Most of the baristas use too much energy because they don't fold their arms. And every time I fold my arm, I am go only going to use the pressure of the wrist and the arm like you see. So I'll place my potter filter here on the, on the tamping mat. Then press lightly not with too much force because most of the baristas have this uh, tendency of pressing their coffee with too much force so after so after tamping our coffee lightly then the first grain i am not going to do what i am not going to exert too much pressure out of the what in the on the coffee grounds within the potter filter so i'll tamp then this two fingers like you see. Since they hold the rim of the tamper, they are still going to hold on the rim of the potter filter. So after tamping, I'll tilt or spin around the tamper to make sure that I have an even distribution of our what? Of our, of our espresso grain. So here I am trying to create a bed within the potter filter. So after tamping, I am going to ring or spin my arm to have a perfect distribution of our coffee. I believe most of you have distributors. 
uh, at your coffee places. But right now, since I don't own a distributor, this is how I distribute my coffee. Or sometimes you're going to find some baristas that uh, while dozing off your coffee, you are going to place it or you're going to doze it off in the potter filter. And every time you get to doze it off, you either know on the fork of the grinder, this is the fork of the grinder, or you bring your coffee, your potter filter and the coffee grounds. Like you see, they are not evenly distributed. One side has a high height and the, the, the other side has a low height. So I'll just tamp it on my, on my other arm since the right, the right hand holds the potter filter, then the left arm is going to be tamped on to have a, an easy distribution. Then after, I'll bring my first finger ring off the coffee grounds still to evenly distribute our coffee. So after all that, I'll come, still hold our tamper like I showed you, then tamp evenly our coffee. Just tamp it lightly, not with too much force. All right, so after spinning it around, then I am going to take it to my espresso machine. But before I take it to the espresso machine, you can easily also determine the bed or the line of the bed. Is it straight or not straight? By looking at it, then to see whether every time you get to stare onto your potter filter or onto the coffee that you've tamped, you are going to easily see that either one of the side is high and one of the side is low, which is really going to cause either channeling or uh, any other effects like I told you the and extraction of it. Then I am going to clean the uh, the potter filter rim. Then we are going to extract a shot of espresso. But today we are not here to extract the shot of espresso. Simply, I wanted to clarify more on the tamping, how you can easily tamp, because most of the baristas are telling me that we have followed most of your videos when it comes to calibration, when it comes to steaming, and many more other videos. But every time you test the espresso that comes out of the espresso machine it really tests either light bitter acidic or many other effects like most of your baristas know but i come to realize that most of the baristas when it comes to tamping you tamp really really in a bad way you don't know how to position yourself you don't know what amount of pressure you are supposed to do what to exert on the espresso grounds just in case you're not sure about the weight of the espresso ground. Uh, this reminds me of uh, one of my managers, Mr. Chris, who told me that every time you tamp your coffee, you can call your friend, tell them to put their arm on the mat, then tamp. This is really going to help you determine the amount of pressure that you're going to exert into your potter filter or onto your coffee grounds. So every time you tamp, you are easily, the person you are, who is helping you out is really going to determine the, the weight of what? or the amount of pressure that you are exerting onto the what? Onto the potter filter. So, after knowing that, uh, after your friend telling you that, then you can uh, transfer that amount of pressure that you have been recommended to into the potter filter. So make sure that while tamping, you determine that. So what are the some of the effects that come out of uh, bad tamping? Remember, the light tamping has its own effects, like, Every time you tamp, you're going to experience under. Uh, every time you tamp uh, slowly, you are going to explain uh, with a light weight, you are going to experience uh, under extraction. This is whereby under extraction simply means that uh, every time you extract, espresso is going to be between 20 to 30 seconds. Sometimes it depends on the coffee or the quality of coffee you have. Like uh, some of the coffees, you're going to see that it tastes nice on to between 27 to 34. But sometimes the basic, uh, the basic uh, timing is between 20 to 30. So sometimes the under extraction, this is when the espresso doesn't even reach 20 seconds. It's between 15, 9, different uh, seconds. Then uh, still you're going to have a light coffee. It's going to taste light watery or uh, sometimes it's going it's going to hyper in the acidity just because you used uh, less weight then it's also going to have less or lighter crema whereby your espresso is really going to look uh, 
in a very, very, very light form. And your, once you test it, uh, that's what you're going to experience. Lack of flavors, too much acidity, very salty, it's watery, and many others. Then, what are the other effects? We are going to experience still uh, of extraction. Once you use too much weight while you are tamping this coffee or trying to create a bed, you are going to experience uh, that under, uh, sorry, that of extraction whereby instead of uh, extracting between 20 to 30 seconds, it's going to be between, uh, it's going to be between like uh, 20 to 40 seconds, just because you are exacting too much pressure while tamping your coffee. So basically, you have to be very, very, very careful while you're tamping your coffee. Remember, it determines the test of your what? Of your espresso that you are going to serve for the day. That's why I would recommend that every time you tamp, like uh, every after 30 cups of es or espressos of serving, at least tamp again to test your coffee to determine whether how it tests. It might be testing poorly or lightly just because of your tamping skill or tamping or uh, tamping what tamping uh yeah tamping so uh how do you get to know that uh, you have a perfect uh tamping you've tamped your coffee perfectly so here i came up with uh two reasons uh first your coffee is going to pour in a single stream like you know it comes out between four to five seconds it will just come in a single stream you might be using a double potter filter or a single potter filter. So that straight stream it brings between the four to five to six seconds, it's really going to show you that you've tamped it perfectly. Then still you have to determine the time it takes between 20 to 30 seconds. Then still you are going to look at the color of your what? Of your espresso. It's supposed to be a rich brown color at the start and while it's finishing it's going to blonde towards the end like you know it's going to be light brown at the first it's going to be dark brown but at the end it's going to be light brown so after all those points are uh, i believe most of you who are watching this video are baristas and non-baristas but hope you've learned or you're getting to understand the point of tamping so i think uh, with tamping that's all that i had for you but just in case you have any more points to add on to this video, please feel free to put it in the comment section below to add up so that uh, most of our friends can get to learn something from the tapping section. And just in case you are also new to this video, don't forget to subscribe and like, feel free to share or anything else that you feel like doing while watching my videos. And hey, as we're concluding this video, please, uh, I am so happy that our channel that was allowed by the YouTube members to allow in more members to join our channel. So just in case you're a barista or a coffee owner or just in case you have interest in coffee, please feel free to join this YouTube channel at uh, even rate or at uh, even price. You can select, uh, it has three purchases. You can easily select uh, uh, any amount that you can offer monthly so that we can carry on with more and more and more lessons of throughout this channel so i really thank you a lot just in case you've been watching from where we started to the end i really thank you a lot and uh, wherever you are allow me wish you a good night or good morning good evening and good afternoon so see you in another video and i sign out right now see you then